This is Twit. You want to know what the future of Enterprise Class SDN, that Software Defined Network, looks like? Well, look no further than a video game. That's right. So Respawn Entertainment is about to release a much anticipated, actually looks fantastic, multiplayer game called Titanfall. It's going to be released on the PC and the Xbox One first, then onto the Xbox 360. The visuals on this game are incredible. There's a lot of buzz. I actually got to play a couple of uh, hours of beta play, and it just it's really, really good. Very tight, and uh, the, the, the user experience is nice. But, of course, we don't care about any of that, right? Because this is an enterprise show. What we do care about is what's going on in the background. Now, there have been many high-profile failures of online game launches. Let's think back to SimCity a while back where people couldn't even sign in to register your, their product. Amazon actually stopped selling it because so many people were complaining that they had bought this new game and, and well, EA servers just couldn't handle the load. You've got the release of the PS4, the, the PlayStation Network, which was supposed to be revolutionary from the PS3 network, and then for the first two weeks or so, no one could log in just because they, they didn't anticipate where the spikes and the blooms would be. Well, Respawn Entertainment did this very nice letter out to the fans explaining why they've gone the route that they have. Now, essentially, let me do the highlights for you. They talked about the different ways of doing a back-end gaming server. You could have peer-to-peer, -peer, player hosted servers, which was what's the old way of doing things on the PS3, where one of the players becomes the host, the server that sends the commands to all the other stations of this is what's being shot, this is who's been hit, this is what game and what map we're playing. But the problem with that is it gets laggy and you're dependent upon a host who may be cheating. There's also dedicated servers, and this is what EA tried to do, buy a ton of dedicated servers and make sure that they're all online for the launch. The problem is dedicated servers don't handle a geographic load very well. In other words, if you buy a million servers and you put them in San Jose, but all your load ends up being in Singapore, it's still going to lag, it's still going to fail. So what Respawn decided to do was to go with Microsoft Azure, because what Azure can do is give you a real SDN, a software defined network. Remember, we talked about Microsoft Autopilot. Well, if it can dynamically assign what servers it uses depending on where the load is coming from, it's, it's an ideal platform for launches. This is what I want to throw over to you first, Chibert. This is a video game, but it's a great model for companies who want to launch services on the internet, right? I mean, if I'm launching a new service, I don't want to have to worry about do I have the server capacity in the right place. Instead, I could go to a global service partner like Microsoft and say, put me on Azure, put me on Autopilot, and wherever the need pops up, automatically bring up more server capacity. Yeah, the, the key thing here is Autopilot. Um, Software-defined networks, clouds, and global load balancing all dovetail nicely together. But if and only if you spend some time and create a set of rules, business rules, on how to handle load. Because remember, computers themselves are pretty dumb until you start giving them very explicit instructions. And that's what Autopilot really does. It gives you ability to represent your business rules on how to handle load, where to shift it, how to shift it, when to shift it. Those are the big, big issues here. And this is not rocket science. We've, we've had little baby steps on the way. You know, back in, you know, a couple years back in Interop, we were using uh, Coyote Point and we were doing some very interesting load balancing when the show wasn't on the show floor. We actually load balanced between the three large colos, Sunnyvale, Denver, and Newark, so that whenever anyone went to interrupt.net, it would load balance between one of those. Microsoft's autopilot takes this a lot further. Keep in mind, Microsoft has data centers all over the world, and being able to shift that load closer to you has been, you know, it's been the holy grail of global load balancing to begin with. Yeah. Uh, Curtis, let's go over to you to talk about that global load balancing. This is something that I think there are a lot of enterprises who are just figuring it out. Because it used to be, well, just get yourself three big colos, four big colos, normally all located in the United States, and everything else just sort of follows. With this announcement, a major company relying on Azure for a major a launch that is going to get a huge spike, which could be a, vi a very visible disaster for Microsoft if it goes wrong, 
Do you think if it goes well that more enterprises will say, okay, we need a global presence, we need a system that can automatically handle global shifts, not just between time zones in the United States, but across countries across the globe, and one that can be fault tolerant? Well, I think that all of the things that you mentioned are absolutely critical, and something like this is going to be closely watched by a lot of people in the enterprise to see how those very issues play into the response that the customers get. And that's really critical. You know, when we talk about global load balancing, as you said, traditionally we've talked about three or four co-locations often on the same continent or within the, the, the boundaries of the United States, say. What people have found out is that even though electrons and photons travel at the speed of light or are pretty darn close to it, when you're talking about massive numbers of users on performance critical applications and games qualify, then latency matters and latency can be impacted in an enormous way by how close the server is to the machine making the request. I think that we're going to see a lot more companies looking at putting servers close to the customers for these critical needs. And look not only at games, but at financial applications, at video applications, and at the, uh, the kind of high demand retail applications that can make a company, let's say uh, one named after an enormous rainforest in South America, <laughs> can provide great customer service even as their customer base is growing. Right. Nice. Now, Max1234 in the chat room says, can we dig into the bits regarding Microsoft Autopilot? We actually covered a lot of that last week in the Enterprise Byte. We've got a guest coming into the show who will specifically address Autopilot. But till then, we're going to leave you with this. Please go play Titanfall. And if it does well, you know that's what the next Enterprise is going to use.